Alrighty. Um, so our session today is, of course, about what's new in our solution for NAV and Business Central. Uh, before we kind of jump into that, I'm going to take some time to introduce Taskbook Factory and give an overview of what's already in our solution, um, and then we'll have some time for question and answer at the end. Um, so just quick agenda, like I said, we'll kind of go through who we are, our company profile, um, benefits to using us, the technology that we use, who our customers are, um, and then do a quick demo of what's already in our solution, and then Peter will talk about some features that are new. Um, so we are, of course, a mobile warehouse management system for Microsoft Dynamics. Uh, we've been in business for about 12 years. All 12 of those we've been doing uh, WMS for Microsoft Dynamics. So it's all we do. It's all we've ever done. Um, and, and we're super proud of that. We've got um, over 700 customers in 35 different countries, um, offices headquartered in Denmark, um, but we have a U.S. location as well. Um, that's where I sit, but uh, I support all of Canada. So um, anybody who's watching um, up in Canada uh, who works with Encore, um, I'll be the one to, to kind of work with you and support you there. Um, we also resell hardware. Um, so it's not something that we, um, you know, make and manufacture ourselves, but um, we spent quite a bit of time actually, um, you know, testing out the best, the best handhelds on the market for our solution. Um, and we can absolutely help um, to, to get some of those devices. Um, so let's talk for a second about why uh, you would implement a, a mobile WMS in the first place. Um, let's say right now you're keeping track of your warehouse um, all via pen and paper. Um, you know, when you receive products into your warehouse, you're writing down a bunch of numbers on a page, um, you know, what's actually in, where it's going, how many of them there are, et cetera. Um, and then taking those back and manually implementing them into your ERP. Um, I'm sure we can all imagine ourselves being an employee in a warehouse and, and just kind of imagine that, um, you know, that's a multi-step process um, and it's super prone to user error just from, you know, misreading numbers or fat fingering things. Um, so you can end up with lots of inaccurate information, um, incorrect orders, all of that stuff is going to cost you um, time, money, customer satisfaction, um, all of those things you want to avoid. So some benefits, um, so reduce the number of errors, you'll have more efficient employees, um, lower warehouse costs, better customer satisfaction, um, and better inventory accuracy. Um, so talk Taskbot Factory specifically, um, we are super user friendly. This is something that you'll see uh, from the moment that I actually kick into the demo. Um, it's a system that's really intuitive to, um, to use and understand. Um, it is uh, on Android OS. Um, it has a two day installation period. So, um, you know, that kind of comes with um, the caveat, of course, that your warehouse is kind of set up in NAV, but um, once that's set up, our installation process is really quick. Um, the solution is really easy to customize. Um, I'm, I'll mention that again a couple times throughout the demo, but um, anything that you want um, our system to be able to do or anything that you have set up in NAV, um, our system can, can really easily reflect that. Um, and then finally, we've got the offline functionality. So a lot of times we see warehouses that are um, in remote locations or they're super large and they only have one Wi-Fi router. Um, and so Wi-Fi can be a challenge. Installing new technology can be a challenge in those warehouses. Um, you'll always need, you know, with any system ours included, you'll always need to be online to download things from the ERP or upload them back to the ERP. But um, to, to kind of compensate for some of those Wi-Fi challenges within the warehouse, um, everything that you kind of do in between there um, can be done offline. So I'll touch on that again in the, in the actual demo. Um, our technology, like I said, we use Android operating system. Um, the application is a .NET application. It's written in C Sharp. Um, we obviously are focusing on NAV and Business Central today, but um, for any of the Microsoft Dynamics ERPs that we work with, um, we can be used on-prem or in the cloud, um, and, and that you know, is an option regardless of whether your ERP is actually on-prem or in the cloud. Um, and then finally, we use uh, Mobi Control as a device management system. Um, so you'll see this for a second too. 
Um, this is kind of what allows us to do a really quick implementation. It allows us to, um, you know, be able to perform support really quickly um, because we don't actually have to be physically on site uh, to be able to use and control these devices. Uh, so quick overview of our vertical solutions. Um, I, I'm sure anybody watching this probably fits into one of these categories, but um, we've got tons of case stories um, on our website at tasklifefactory.com. Um, and then I, of course, would be happy to, um, you know, talk through any specific case stories. Um, so just a couple of features. I'll, I'll kind of go through everything that comes um, standard in our solution. Um, and then you'll see a couple of them through the demo. Um, so receiving items, um, you know, obviously when, when products are coming into the warehouse, we're registering those items. Um, you'll see we support lot numbers, serial numbers, um, anything like that. Um, from there, you can go ahead and put away items, um, assign a bin to those items that you've already received and registered. Um, you can go through and, and do picking, so um, that can happen either by picking one order at a time, or we do support um, tote picking, which would allow you to pick multiple orders at one time um, and just keep improving that efficiency. Um, you can move items throughout the warehouse to different bins. Um, you can count items as needed, um, and both move and count can be on a planned or unplanned basis. So um, this can be something that's coming as sort of an assignment. Um, you know, if you want to kind of set regular um, checkpoints to move or count things, um, but they can also happen um, ad hoc on the fly. Um, you can do negative adjustments for um, items that are damaged, expired, whatever the case may be. Um, this will be a really relevant application of um, one of our new features, which is image capture. Um, so, so Peter will obviously go into that um, in, in that segment of what's new. Um, you can scan any bin or scan any item and see either what's in the bin or what bin that item should go in. Um, it's kind of two sides of the same coin there. Um, add item dimensions um, for anything you, you choose to do that for. Um, you can add a barcode um, and actually register it into the ERP if a supplier um, changes the barcode that they're using um, or a new item actually comes into the warehouse. Uh, you know, that's been purchased but hasn't actually been received before and that barcode isn't associated with the product yet. Um, you can do that all through our system as well. Um, substitute items, again, you know, this kind of requires some setup on the ERP side, but um, you can scan any barcode, look up what items can be substituted for it um, when you're filling orders and things like that. Um, printing labels from, from the mobile device, uh, Peter will touch on that a little bit more as well. Um, we can integrate with any shipping provider that you use um, and, and have some actions on our end to um, get those items ready for shipment. Um, and then, like I mentioned, uh, the attached image as well, which Peter will go over to. Um, so I will switch the screen that I'm sharing over to our actual device. Um, let me make sure I get the right one here. Yeah. Um, so can we see this? Yep, I can see the mobile phone. Okay, perfect. Um, so I will kind of take you guys through, um, you know, some of the, the basic introductory features here. Um, you know, like I, I kind of just showed in that PowerPoint, there are um, quite a few, but I'll just kind of run through um, some of the ones that we see used most commonly. Um, so we'll go ahead and log in here um, and it'll take us to our home page. Um, so you've got all those that I that I went through in the PowerPoint, um, those same images and titles and all that good stuff. Um, so you'll kind of see as I as I go through this, um, you know, we won't go through every single feature today, but um, the, the ones that we do go through will kind of give you a really good idea for how the other ones are look in our setup. Um, you know, like I mentioned, it's really intuitive, really user friendly. Um, so it's pretty easy to figure out once you get in the group of, of doing a couple of them. So we'll start with receive. Um, so we've just gotten some products into our warehouse um, and we're ready to, to register that we've gotten those. Um, 
Obviously, the least efficient way to do this would be to actually go through and, and click into each of these orders until we can figure out what we're, we're trying to work with here. Um, the most efficient way that we can do it um, is that we just go ahead and pick up one of the items that's uh, in our, our you know, barrel of things that we've received and just go ahead and scan it. So you'll hear that beep when I scan a barcode. And this will filter down to, to every um, incoming order that, um, that that specific item that I scanned is in. So as you can see, we have two left here, um, and I can just go ahead and scan another product in the order that I'm working with, and we'll go right into um, receive. So this is actually the point um, where we're allowed to go offline. So we've downloaded this list of what we need to receive um, from the ERP and everything that's done um, from here up until we post. Um, can be offline. So um, we will start out with the orange chocolate um, and just go ahead and scan that. The system knows we're expecting to receive 10, so 10 will automatically pop up um, you know, as being the, the expected quantity. And I can just go ahead and click this green check mark here to approve that. Now let's say we do our next item, um, the pistachio chocolate, scan those. The expected quantity here says 15. Um, let's imagine for a second now that um, I only count 10. So I can go ahead and manually click on that and edit that number. Click that green check. And as you can see here, this first product where I received all 10 turned green on the right side. And this second one here turned orange um, because I'm not actually finished with that. Um, so let's say I go ahead and um, you know, find the rest of those five in the bottom of that, um, of all of those products. I can go ahead and scan it again, um, confirm the quantity of five. Um, as you can see, our system automatically knows that, um, you know, we were supposed to receive 15. We've already received 10, so there's five remaining. Um, so I can just go ahead and click that green check as well. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, um, our system supports lot numbers as well as serial numbers. Um, those are these next two line items here, uh, this peppermint and these golf balls. Um, you know, like I said, everything's pretty intuitive. So um, same kind of workflow there, just also scanning the lot number and the serial number. Um, but just for the sake of time today, I will go ahead and post um, what I've done. So I click this little menu button, Go ahead and click post. Um, here I can enter anything I want. Um, you know, if I'm if I'm scanning a barcode for a delivery note, um, you know, or if I just kind of want to write something in, like the date that I received these, um, you know, it doesn't matter. You can kind of put anything you want in there. Um, since I didn't finish scanning everything, um, we'll kind of have these, you know, guardrails that. Um, you know, try to keep everything accurate and, um, you know, being done the way that it should be. So since I didn't actually complete this order, um, it'll ask me if I still um, am sure I want to proceed and just kind of draw my attention to the fact that there's other items in there. But um, like I said, I'm, I'm going to skip over these ones today. So I can just go ahead and click yes. you can see the order has posted successfully. So at this point, um, you know, to, to actually post, we've gone back online um, and all of this information is now being reflected back um, within the ERP. Um, so we will go ahead and put some items away um, after having received them. So we'll go ahead and click into put away. Um, again, we can kind of do the same thing here where, um, you know, we've got a bunch of products in front of us um, and we can just go ahead and scan one, um, you know, to know which order that we need to get into. Um, so here I've got the same two items um, and, you know, I'll show you a good one here. So to put these away, scan that item. And now here I actually scan the bin that I'm going to be placing it into. Um, you can see it comes up with a bin number here and, and tells me where it's expecting me to put them. Um, so I go ahead and find that bin number, scan it, um, and it tells me that the quantity should be 10. I can go ahead and confirm that quantity. Um, now let's say I have a little bit of a different situation here. So I'll, I'll scan my next product. And let's say to start, um, you know, I do want to put some of them into the bin that they're assigned to. 
can scan that bin, but let's say here that I only have space for eight of these, for example. I can manually change that to eight, click that check mark. And as you can see here, again, this is turned orange. Um, so let's go back in, let's say I wanna put the rest of them away um, in a different bin that they fit better in or makes more sense for you know, whatever reason. It'll still tell me where this expected bin is, but here, let's say I wanna put them in a different bin. I can just scan something else. Um, this will again just pop up kind of, you know, reminding me that this is not the correct thing, asking if I'm sure I want to do it. Um, and I can go ahead and click yes. So the idea here is, um, you know, that I, I kind of, in my mind, compare it a little bit to a bowling alley. Um, you know, imagine you're, you're going bowling and you don't have any guardrails. Um, you kind of have to throw the ball right down the middle for it to get to where you want it to go. Um, within the warehouse, our, our system is those guardrails. So, um, you know, whichever kind of avenue that um, you find works best, whether it's right in that moment or um, how you guys want to lay out the system, um, will always just be the guardrails to make sure everything stays on track um, and make sure everything um, syncs up and is up to date. So, um, again, here it's remembered that, you know, I only have seven left to put away. Um, so I'll confirm that for that next bin. And here, since I did do both of them, um, it'll automatically pop up with this question asking me if I want to um, post that order and I can click yes. And it was posted successfully. Um, so the next one that I'll show you guys is pick. Um, we can, um, you know, we can do this a couple different ways. Like I mentioned, um, you can pick just one order at a time. Um, we can also enable tote picking to allow you to do, um, you know, as many as you'd like at one time. Um, here again, just sort of for the sake of this demo, um, we'll just go through one. Um, so let's click into here. Um, and I just want to show you guys really quickly, um, if you keep an eye on this bottom right, um, when I click into it, you'll actually see a lock symbol up here. Um, that again is just another one of those guardrails, um, you know, for when other employees are kind of looking through what orders actually need to be picked. Um, that lock symbol will show them that um, this order is already being worked on. So I can click into there. Um, and again, it just works in a really similar way. I just go ahead. Um, go ahead and do my scan of that item that I'm picking. Go ahead and scan the bin that I'm taking it out of. Confirm the quantity that I'm taking. And we're all set to go there. Um, here we're, we're picking something with a lot number uh, with these peppermint chocolates. So we'll go ahead and scan those. Scan that bin that we're taking them from. And then in this case, I'll scan the barcode for the lot number. And again, um, you know, the system automatically knows that the customer needs five, um, and I can confirm that quantity of five and go ahead and post that as well. So the, that order was posted successfully. Um, so the last thing that I will show you guys in here um, is going to be the move function. Um, so, you know, imagine you know, for whatever reason, um, you know, imagine we're doing some replenishment. We know we have a bunch of new products coming in um, and there's some things around the warehouse that would just fit better um, in other places. Um, I can actually be assigned to move some products around within the warehouse um, and put them in the bins that would make more sense. Um, so we'll click into that move order, um, click into this product, um, scan the bin that I'm taking it from, the quantity, confirm the quantity that I'm taking. And as you can see now, this is orange because I've only taken it from the bin um, and I haven't actually completed the action of moving it. So we can go back in there, scan the bin that I'm placing it into and confirm that quantity again. And go ahead and post. Um, so I can do that, um, like I said, that can be assigned. I can do that on an ad hoc basis. Um, and I can also move the entire contents of a bin, um, you know, from one bin to the next with bulk move. 
Um, so like I went over, we've got a couple different um, standard features here that are really great and really common to use. Um, I will go ahead and sort of kick it over to Peter for the what's new, but um, you know, hopefully if there are any you know, additional questions or anything anybody wants to see um, out of these other features, I'm happy to do a, a more in-depth personal demo for anybody. Hey, thanks, Kate, for, for a great demo, uh, a short, short and sweet demo. Uh, let me just uh, share my screen here. Um, let's just see, can you see anything? You can see my screen. Yeah. Yep, I can see the two, uh, your slide. Yep. All right, very good. Well, maybe I should just introduce myself first. My name is Peter List. I'm the CTO and founder of Transfer Factory. And um, yeah, I'll be taking you through some of the new features we've recently added to the product. Uh, of course, we continuously uh, maintain and uh, and evolve our product. What you're looking at here is yeah, 12 years of of uh, continuous development on the same app. So all our 700 plus customers use the same app, uh, just with a little bit of uh, different configuration files. Um, I want to show you something. Uh, so the features that I'll be going through is I'll show you uh, what we call promoted menu items, something that will help. Yeah. Uh, you know, Again, make the app even more user friendly. I'll show you how you can take pictures, how you can use that in as documentation in different processes. I'll show you our new cloud printing, which really removes a lot of complexity from at least when you want to print uh, and your and your your piece system is in the cloud. That can be a challenge. We've we've solved that in a nice uh, nice simple way. Um, and then I'll show you some other stuff where you if you need to pick multiple items from the same bin. Again, some 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 things that'll speed speed things up. A uh, new feature that Microsoft has added where you finally now can over receive uh, items coming in. We've added support for that on the mobile device as well. And, and then I'll show you some of the, the new hardware devices that are available with our app as well, because that, that's another thing, you know, when you you know when evolving our project our, our app you know we started out on Windows Mobile uh, software and now everything moved to Android and and we yeah moved our app uh, uh, yeah with it all right I don't want to do more PowerPoint than that so let's get uh, let's get rid of that and uh, so what you're looking at here is um, is two uh, yeah two mobile devices that I'm remote controlling. Uh, on the left, you uh, we have uh, one configuration. So if I go into the uh, into the uh, into the receive module, we can see we have the menu down here, and inside the menu we have some goodies uh, that that you can uh, that the user can activate. On the the mobile device on the right, uh, I've turned on what what we call the promoted menu items. So anything you have inside this menu. You can you can make them you know appear right on the screen so the user can easily ex uh, access them. So you're saving a click from clicking on the menu, and and then activating it. And also it gives it shows the user what you can do here. Um, and if we step uh, even further in, if we select one of the orders, uh, let me just show you what happens when I click update here. You you saw the lock that. Uh, uh, now you can see the lock that Kate was uh, telling you about uh, earlier. If I go into the other order here, um, now you can see that, yeah, from a user's point of view, it's just much simpler that you can see, for example, that I can add, if a barcode is missing, I can add a, add a cross-reference, I can do printing, um, yeah. And then what's not promoted is still, is still here in the menu. Um, but that will speed things up, it'll make it, even easier for the uh, for new user to figure out what to do. Um, so while we are while we're in here, well, maybe I can just one more thing I want to say about the menu items because all the good stuff that you see out here on the main menu, we can give access to those features anywhere in the app. So for example, locate item, you have that out here on the main menu. But when you use it here, you need to tell the system which item you want to you want to find when you're in receiving and you click on locate item 
we automatically transfer the item number so it already knows what it is. So it just it's easier to use because we can transfer data between the different screens and kind of make it make it super simple to uh, to use. Um, also, if I wanted to add a cross reference, when you go in here, it's it's ready to do the scan of that barcode that you're missing. And uh, yeah, all right. So next thing I want to show you is how you can um, how you can take pictures uh, using the uh, using the mobile device. Um, it's a feature we've recently added where anywhere in the in the app, for example, let's say we're doing a receive uh, receive function, so we are uh, we are on this order right here, um, and we notice something that that maybe uh, that we just want to document. So I can go in and attach an image. So now it's attaching it to this to this order. I can say add image, and then the the camera of the of the mobile device starts up. So you can see my my very messy table here. Uh, but let's say I'm receiving this uh, this box, so I can take a picture of it. You know, it looks it looks kind of open. So maybe it's a good good thing to to document this before I move uh, move forward. Um, so let's put in you can put in a comment here as well uh, and do that. And you can even add add multiple pictures. So if I open up the box, say oh, let's oh, I can see what what the content is and. Yeah, and put that put that in as well. All right. So once I've I've done that on the mobile device, these pictures will actually move into uh, to Business Central, so you can so you can you can look at them there. Just go <clears throat> go here. Um, so they'll end up in what we call the mobile media queue. We go in here and. I can do a I can do a search for so this was receipt number seven so I can just say oh seven and I just see you can see yeah if I just show here there is a reference to the uh, to to what it's related to so I can go in and see okay that's my that's my box and that's what the content was and this is really just you know, something you can you know you can take the picture store it in here if you need to look at it at some point. Well, then you have it. You have the reference back to, uh, yeah, to the uh, to the order. So a feature that is super uh, flexible, something you can use both on inbound. Maybe you want it, you know, before you ship items out, just take a picture before you close the box. And um, if you are removing items because they're damaged using the adjust quantity, maybe you can uh, take a picture of it there just to document what uh, what the problem was. That saves you from writing a long long description of something that uh, that happened uh, because you know anyway you yeah you try it's never going to be a, a really good job to um, you know it's never going to be easy to write a lot of text on these mobile devices so a picture is just a, a good way of uh, of bypassing that um, so hopefully you can you can see that this is a yeah very flexible feature that you can yeah that you can use in a, in a lot of ways the next thing, and yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna, uh, you can even see the picture on the on the mobile device as well. So you can go in and look at the attachments. Uh, that also means if someone else is taking a picture on another device, you can see it uh, because now they're coming out from uh, from uh, from Business Central. All right. So the next thing I want to show you is uh, is cloud printing, um, and. I think we'll start the journey just in uh, in inside uh, Business Central. Um, and so the background for this feature was when, when Microsoft came out with the Business Central in the cloud. Um, they, just to put it nicely, they they kind of forgot how to <laughs> that, that that people needed printing as well, where where it, you know we weren't necessarily using the uh, the web client. So we introduced something where we can actually use the mobile device to open a connection to a printer um, and and do the printing that way. So we don't need to connect the printer directly to the cloud. Uh, what it looks like on um, in Business Central is that you we have a mobile print setup. You 
click on create standard setup you type in when you you, you need an extra license to to get this so you, you need an extra license per printer that you attach here um, then you get a login for the uh, for the cloud printing service then you put in your printers so in this case i have one zebra cq 510 uh, printer i've put in this is the bluetooth address of the uh, of that printer and then i can filter per location so that to be the, you know that means warehouse so if you have printers in in, in you know, on the east coast and uh, and a warehouse on the west coast you can kind of set it up so that the users won't see those printers that you know see the printers that are not relevant um, if you leave it blank the printers will show up anywhere uh, for each printer you can assign specific templates so in this case i have two versions of of my item label um, because typically it, it depends on you know what printer you put in uh, what paper you put in the printer what the printer can do so here you can just make sure that uh, if you're printing out a specific label that we, you only show relevant printers uh, um, i just did the setup it, it typically takes about five minutes to, to to get this set up if if you're a little bit slow like me um, and yeah and then it's pretty much just just using it and from the user's point of view um, you go into let's go into the order and we select the uh, the item that we that we want to print for we just do something see if i can be a little bit clever here all right so i'm just gonna this one i'm just gonna start the just turn on the printer first otherwise we won't be that clever all right so i'm gonna attach an image on this device so you can see i have my my printer right here um so i'll go in and print i'll select my so you get the label designs that are that are available in the system and you say how many you want uh, so that's the quantity we put in the label which printer and then how many copies we want in this case we just want one and now we've put out a nice uh, nice looking label and uh, yeah we can start using it attaching it to uh, to um, to the items that arrive uh, without it without a barcode on so hopefully all your all your vendors will put on barcodes on the items that arrive if that's not the case for some of them you can you can use this uh, this feature to print out labels so you fix everything in the receiving process making all the the put away the movements the pickings you make those processes efficient because you have a, a good barcode on it um, so the templates is something that evolves all the time so we are adding different sizes uh, labels uh, bin labels uh, tote labels uh, we are doing a delivery note as well but this is this is just a system that will keep evolving when you connect to it you get access to all the labels that we have if you need something in a format if you have a label size that we don't have in stock we'll add it for you free of charge as part of the service uh, so it's kind of yeah everyone connects to the same thing getting the benefits of uh, yeah of what, of what everyone else is uh, is adding to the system um, yeah then i want to show you something else um, i have uh, if we go back and look at, for example, picking. So we've uh, so Kate was telling you about uh, tote picking. We didn't we didn't see it. I I have enabled it here, uh, and kind of as part of maybe I should just briefly explain tote picking. So this is a feature that we develop for our web shop customers. We typically have many orders, but with one or two lines on each order. That means you need to you need to pick for multiple orders to be to be really efficient. In this case, I have um, yeah, I have three different customers uh, on this order, but you can see they all need the same item, so I have to go to the same bin. And normally, uh, before we develop this new feature, you you were doing the you were scanning the item and kind of going through that. Then you would scan the bin. Uh, you would scan the toad and then you would kind of repeat that process 
uh, for for the next line. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna step out of this because we've added a new feature where instead of scanning the item first, if you scan the bin first, then it actually filters to only show the items that you need to pick from this bin, and it also remembers that. I have scanned this bin already, so I don't need to do it again. So here I can just scan the item. I'll scan the tote or the box that I'm putting these items into and register the quantity. And then I scan the item again, scan another tote, register the quantity, and I just continue that process, making it, let's do the, got the wrong one. So I, I just try to put the item into a into a box destined for another customer. So, so the system, of course, gave me a gave me a warning there. But now I've picked everything into a, yeah into these three, and I can do the same for for the next process. But I think I think you get the picture here that you know we're again we're we're just saving that extra scan of scanning the bin uh, three times. Um, now we just scan it one time. Uh, and it's it it may it may seem like a small thing, but if you're working in the warehouse and you do this a thousand times every day, it all adds up. And we really want to make sure that the people using our system in the warehouse that they you know that it makes sense to them. Otherwise, they won't use it. If it if the process feels weird, they're gonna find other ways to do it. Um, yeah. So we we uh, yeah. We do our best to make sure that uh, that it feels uh, super relevant. All right. The next thing I want to show you is um, that you can do uh, receive more than than expected. So let's just go in, and I've prepared a uh, warehouse receipt for you guys. So in here we have receipt number nine, and at the moment. Uh, so the over receiving needs that you means that you need to set up kind of an over receipt code. Um, if it's not turned on, let me just show you what it looks like. So if I go into receive here and I take this. Uh, so normally this is how it looked for many, many years, 12 years, yeah, 12 and a half years. If you try to put in 11 here, the system will block you because standard NAV or Business Central when we're not able to handle this before. Um, if I go out, I'll just go out of the order again. And then I'll go back and say I want to attach an over receipt code. So that means I can do up to 10%. So I'm going to add that. Then on the mobile device, go into the order again. And then when, uh, when I put in 11 and say OK, now the system accepts it. So again, here Microsoft has, has added a new feature, a feature that was maybe long overdue, some would say, um, but we we implement support for it as well. So we, yeah, so we respect how Business Central is set up. So here I'll just do the posting and now, it, uh, now we got our 11 posted. And yeah, when I update, you can, yeah, receipt number nine no longer ex uh, exists and uh, yeah. That's kind of it for the um, for the new features I, I wanted to show, but I just want to make sure that you know about our hardware page on taskfactory.com. On the hardware, you find it up here. Um, if you scroll down, you can see all the devices that we are um, that we've tested our solution on. So, um, and this list is evolving. Uh, you know, every every month, new devices come out. Uh, one of the, the the cool things I, that, that we've added, uh, we have, for example, if you want to give your users a, a hands-free option, you typically in in the good old days you had to buy stuff from Zebra, and these you know this is what's called a ring scanner that you put on your yeah on, on one or two fingers, but it to be honest it it is a little bit bulky. Uh, Procloth has added something that's very lightweight that you can put on top of your of your, of your palm and then if you let's say you have a picking wagon and you mount a tablet on it as well so so these two in, in combination you can have a hands-free setup where you go and uh, you look at the at the tablet to see what you need to do go to the bin do your scanning and uh, and come back place the items on the bin um, but make sure to check out this uh, 
this page here because yeah this is where you'll find the the supported devices um we we aim to support all you know products from zebra and honeywell um but things move so fast in the in this android world so there may be a little bit of a of, of a delay but but this is yeah that, that's our goal to to support all uh, yeah the full product range from these two vendors kate did i miss anything um i don't think so all right well i don't know if there are if there are any questions that we need to uh, that we need to address here or if we just covered everything in one go I'll just have a look here. It doesn't look like any questions have come in, so I think we're good on that front. All right. Well, maybe if um, just on a on a final note. So, so we are of course working on on something something new as well. So we we have a product roadmap that we that we um, yeah that we develop against, and some of the the new features that will be coming out is that we are kind of extending our app to go into the uh, production manufacturing domain. So we'll be adding support for uh, consumption directly on uh, on the uh, on the production oil journals and also registering output from that and, uh, and stuff like that. So uh, be sure to tune in for the next session of, of what's new where we yeah, have, uh, have that to show you. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Okay, well, thanks very much to Kate and Peter today, and uh, I guess we can give everyone a little bit of time back. All right, Kate, thanks so much, everyone. Again, Thank we you. want to be efficient in everything we do. That's right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.